great thing is that your session is recorded, so you'll be able to reference it later if you have any questions about anything or if you want to see something repeated. Mm -hmm. So as you know, we're painting Bob Ross today, or we're going to attempt to um, paint the master, Mr. Bob Ross. And uh, let's see, I want to make sure that we're recording. Yes, we are recording. Yes, excellent. Okay. So you guys ready? You ready to paint? You got your drinks, you got your hair dryer, you got your water, you need like a can of water or a glass of water. You need your supplies that came in your kit. You should have your paintbrush, which I get to use a new paintbrush today, so I'm so excited about that. You should have these colors and uh, your fan brush. You know your artist when you got a fan brush. Ask anybody if they ever went to a, a paint and sip and got a fan brush. They're going to be like, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> so, and you should also have a palette knife. Um, we have, uh, oh, and paper towels as well, or a, a old washcloth, right? And you should also have two palette trays. So there's one underneath, so we can mix dark colors and light colors, right? So um, I'm going to open up my new paintbrush because I've been using that. I've probably painted, I don't know, 20 paintings with my paintbrushes. These are great art student quality brushes. You're going to find that you have a number 14 brush. That's the flat brush. That's this one right here. And then you're going to have a round brush. And that one is your number 12 brush. And this is for getting into the really tight spaces and making little tiny stars later on. And this one is going to be for um, painting flat lines, flat straight lines in a circle like this. And then of course our fan brush is gonna help us make these trees. So I know you guys are dying to make those trees. So we're gonna get right on it. Okay, so this is um, what we hope to get when we're done. And um, you have your reference image as well. Oh, it's stuck to the back of this. Okay. So you have a reference image. And then also, you're, you'll have a piece of tracing paper that looks like this. And there's not a lot of detail because we're going to put the detail in, right? And finally, you should have a piece of tracing paper and, or I'm sorry, uh, carbon paper and um, your canvas. So my canvas is a uh, canvas board. You guys have actual canvas. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this works. So there's a shiny side and there's a dull side. The shiny side goes down. Okay, shiny side down. I'm going to say it again, shiny side down. If you don't put the shiny side down, you'll do your tracing and it won't appear on your, on your, on your paper or be on your palette. So you don't want to do that. So that's why I keep repeating that. I'm going to let somebody in. And you guys can see my notes. You shouldn't be seeing it. Okay. So this is how it goes. So we just lay our carbon paper. Down. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle on our canvas. Okay. And that goes just like this. It's okay if this bottom area doesn't um, fit to the edge because we're only tracing up to this point. So you'll need a ballpoint pen or a number two pencil. And this is what we're set out to do, right? So you want to lay your hand on your canvas and you want to put the edge of your writing utensil right against the line and then just kind of pivot your hand in the circle. So just keep the nub of your wrist on the, on the canvas and then just kind of use it like a pendulum, <laughs> a compass, you know? So we're just following that line uh, right around. Let me make sure I got my shiny, shiny side down. <laughs> I need to tell you guys all about that and then ruin it myself. 
Okay, so I'm just pivoting from my wrist. I'm not lifting my fingers up or my hand off the canvas and I'm going back around the other way as well. And don't worry about if it's not exactly perfect because we're, um, we're gonna use our number 14 brush to straighten everything out. Now I'm gonna pick up my canvas from holding down the tracing paper and the carbon paper. I'm gonna rotate my canvas so I can make my lines on the other side, okay? So I'm starting at a midpoint here and I'm just using my wrist and pivoting around in the gnat circle. So you don't have to press down too hard. And then just follow that along the top as well. Okay, so there's our circle. And now we're just going to do some preliminary lines. Actually, no, don't worry about the lines. We're just doing a circle right now. That's all we're doing. So that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. Okay, so our next thing is Shelby is going to, oh, and put this to the side. We're not done with this yet. We're going to come back after we paint the background and the moon, and we're going to add just some little guidelines for the trees. Our uh, fan brush is going to do all the work on our trees. Okay. So um, Shelby's going to put up a trivia question, our first trivia question of the evening. Now we have reproductive health specialists with us today. Tell us what you guys do. What is that? You got, you help people have babies. Is that what you do? It's a lot of research. Does it's somebody else want to answer? Fact, you can have your microphones on. You don't have to be quiet. I'm not the only one, you know, this is my show kind of, but it's more your show too. So, you know, <laughs> you can talk to us because we're going to have trivia, so you got to be able to answer it. Um, so a lot of research. Yeah, well, we do. You guys don't want to talk we about do, that, right? We do, no, we do the, actually the opposite. We we do like policy-based, a lot of research related to um, abortion policy. Oh, okay. As well as access to abortion, contraception, reproductive health. Wow, so important roles you guys play. Changing the world, supporting the world. And today for a little relaxation and getting away from it all. I'm gonna help you do that. I won't mention work again, I promise. All right. <laughs> So here we go. Our first trivia question in cooking, if you par a carrot, what do you do to it? Do you chop it, skewer it, peel it, or throw it out? In cooking, if you par, or is it pear? Is it pear? I'm not thinking about golf, I guess. Okay, if you <laughs> a carrot, <laughs> what do you do to it? These women don't sound like they're cooking a lot over here. Chop peel it, it, skewer it, peel it, or throw it out. We say peel over here. Miriam, say something. Peel it. Peel. peel it. Okay, Miriam said peel it. Ushma said, oh, yep, and ah, that's it. Peel it. Peel it, yes. Nice. I say All right, it. so we got our little circle down here. Now, um, you should have your reference, and it's just lay it on the table so you can look at it while we're going about this, okay? Because that's going to help you make some good decisions. Um, you also should probably get your camera ready because once we get like midway through, quarter way through, something like that, you're going to want to stop and take a picture and see how a fabulous job you're doing, all right? So let me get this uh, paint ready to uh, mix. The first color we're going to put down is the color white, okay? Because we're going to use white I, and mix that with... Um, I have a quick question. Sure. I'm having difficulty opening my brushes. Does anyone have any <laughs> tips or suggestions? Okay, now, Amy, you know I can't come over there. I can't get this. I can't get this thing up. <laughs> yeah, they're vacuum sealed. I, I, I think Amy started with the sipping a little earlier. I know, right? If <laughs> only. <laughs> <laughs> Just twist, twist it, and pull at the same time. Okay. Twist and pull at the same time. We gotta wait for Amy to get her brushes open. I can oh, open God. like okay, we need to call nine one one. I'll be back. You guys go ahead. I'm just gonna get some scissors. <laughs> get some scissors. Did anybody else have that kind of problem opening the 
Brushes? No. No, Amy's just special like that, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll give her a minute. So while she's doing that, I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to go over here. We're going to pick up some of this wonderful uh, thick acrylic paint, the white, and we're going to put that down. Okay. I'm going to put this down, and we're going to mix it with a little orange. Now, but we're going to put the orange on the side. Never mix two colors directly together from the start. Always put the color down to the side when you're going to mix it together, right? So we got that orange down. So now we're going to take a little bit of orange by itself over here. We're going to take a little bit of our white and we're going to mix that together so that we get a lighter color. And then also I'm going to take my palette knife and wipe it off. I'm going to pick up some yellow too and put that to the side. Okay, so that's how you um, successfully mix colors by not mixing them directly. You always put your colors to the side and then you add a little bit as you go along. Okay, it's just like if you're seasoning a recipe, you don't just throw the whole container in the pot, right? You take a little bit at a time until you get to the color that you need. So I'm just adding a little orange to the yellow to this. And we're going to use this as our base coat on the left-hand side of our painting, okay? So I'm going to just wipe off my palette knife on the edge. I'm going to wait. Amy, you got your brushes open? I do, I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right. There's no way I could have opened them without the scissors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, um, the first brush we're going to use is our number 12 brush, right? So that's, I'm sorry, our number 14 brush. And that is the brush with the flat edge. That's this one. Okay. It has a flat edge. And the really cool thing about this brush is that it can be made into a chisel type edge. And that chiseled edge is what we use to stay within the straight lines. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my brush on both sides. Not too much paint. Just mix it. It should be, your paint should be the consistency of ink. So mix those together so they start to, you know, it's a little more flowy than pasty. We don't want a pasty consistency. Okay, so I'm getting paint all over me as usual. All right. So we're gonna start on this side of the canvas, right? And we're gonna start at the top and just follow that, place the edge of that chisel down on your canvas and just pull it around like so. And that'll help you stay within the lines just using that flat edge of your brush. So if you're having any trouble, just check out. We got a couple different camera angles for you to check out so you can see how I'm moving the brush around the canvas. Stay on this side for now. So we're just and Cheryl, what was, the, what was the color? Sorry, I missed the coloring mixing part. Um, it was just white uh, and yellow. Hold on, I'll mix it for you again, but let me get this down so it doesn't dry on me. Um, since you haven't put canvas to paint or paint to canvas yet, you're fine. Hold on just a second. And what I'm going to do is show them how to um, gradually go lighter over here. So we're going to pick up some, some white off to the side with just a little yellow, like as much as was on the back of my brush. Okay. So that was just with a dot of yellow, like this much. Okay, because we're now we're going to merge this into the other side of the of the moon on the on the light side of the moon. Okay, and I'm I'm coming to you. I'm going to get back to you in just a second. No worries. Now, the idea of this is to do wet on wet blending of the paint so that there's um, so that you can't tell the difference between the start of the bright yellow to the beginning of the lighter color, okay? So, like, like so, right? 
And then we want to make sure your brush is nice and wet. Okay, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you right now. And yeah, to, to make sure that there's an easy transition, your paint needs to be wet. If it's not, you'll be able to see right away the difference between the two. All right, so I'm going to mix this color again for you, Virali. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to mix it again. I just want to know what you did. That's all. Oh, you got it? Okay, cool. cool. I think so. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but you want to see, notice how that's a lot lighter. So what I did was I used this color, right, to put down yep. on this side of the moon. And then I took white and added just a dot okay. of yellow to it so that it's super bright. Because we're going to make this even darker as we continue to go along. Got it. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and just knock out that rest of the, the bright yellow out of my brush. And now I'm going to go a little deeper with my orange. And in the meantime, we have a trivia question. It is, who painted the ceiling? of the Sistine Chapel? Was it Da Vinci, Van Gogh, Michelangelo, or Picasso? Michelangelo. Uh-huh. Girls mm -hmm. need Nice. Great job. OK, so now that color that I just used for this lighter um, yellowish orange area, I've added some of my bright orange to it. Okay, so now this is going to be a darker color on top of this. So watch very carefully. And I'm going to do the same technique. I'm using the chisel edge of my brush and I'm putting down this darker orange. And I'm following my moon line all the way around. And then I'm using the tip of the brush. I'm not pressing down hard. I'm just using the, I'm just lightly touching so that it, it blends, you see, all the way around. So if you press too hard, you'll get, you know, lines and brush strokes. So we just want to, especially in this area, you just want to lightly brush it. So it looks like a gradual progression of color. Okay, we can even come a little bit more towards the center if we like. Just as long as we leave this side bright. When you're done with your painting, it's really going to pop against the blue background. OK. How are we doing? How's it looking? Are you mixing with water at all? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she said, oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we definitely want water. You want to, oh. remember I said you want your paint to be the consistency of ink. So you have to dip. You have to dip. So I'm going to show you the dip. <laughs> so we're just dipping one time like this so that a little paint, you know, a couple drops of water can drip off, right? And then you just put that into your paint on both sides until it thins itself. Okay, and if it's still too thick, like a pasty consistency, you want to dip again and then add that to your paint as well. Okay. So uh, the objective is to get that chisel point back again. You can see that. It's like a chisel. Okay, we got another trivia question. How many U.S. states border the Gulf of Mexico? Okay. Got me thinking. Um, A, three, B, five, C, seven. She always surprises me with these trivia questions. And D, 10. How many states border the Gulf of Mexico? Five, five, five. Five, five, five. These are, we're dealing with some smart chicks on here. <laughs> nice. nice. OK, <laughs> good answer, you guys. All right, so I am, again, just using the tip of my brush, just like the very tip. I'm not pressing down too hard. I'm just using the tip so that all my colors are kind of blended together, right? So now what I'm going to do is add, um, you know what color I don't have? I know they have it, though. They didn't have. You guys have brown? 
Yep. Yes. Yep. yep. I don't have any. Shelby, I need some around. All right. For now, I'm going to just go ahead with some pure orange. I'm just going to take some pure, pure orange, and I'm going to mix it in this other color a little bit, because now we want a darker orange because it's so bright and there's all kinds of chemical reactions going on up there in the, in the sky. So there's all these different colors. So see how this is darker? And we're just using that chiseled edge to go around the edge of our moon, our harvest moon. Did you, are you using um, more color, like a stronger color? Yeah, I'm using different. the orange by itself. Okay, I'm, uh -huh. I'm taking the orange as the predominant color. Okay, then I'm just kind of dipping into that other color we just used. But orange is still my predominant color. So that now it's the darkest of the three colors we've used so far. So yeah, so we're painting Bob Ross today. Did anybody grow up watching Bob Ross? Oh yeah. Who said oh yeah? Oh Raleigh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think that's the whole reason why I wanted to paint is just watching him and going, wow. You know, he was like a god because he was creating like right before your very eyes. And he was so okay. fast. Right? <laughs> okay, so don't worry about if, um, if your moon is imperfect because, you know, we got the night sky to make it look more beautiful. So don't worry about that. And now when you get to the center part, just make sure the tip of your brush is wet, but tap off the excess water. So we're gonna dip in the water like this. We're tapping off the excess water. And then we're just kind of lightly brushing so we can make a uh, short work of those rough edges in between. Okay. Oh, so we got a question. Uh, so what is the only U.S. state to grow coffee beans? Is it Florida, Hawaii, California, or Louisiana? Hawaii. What, is Hawaii? what was that? Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay, Amy said Hawaii. Are you doing that last step with just water? Is that what you said? The last step in just so, water. Oh, you mean when I blend? Yeah, yeah. let me show you that one more time because that's Thanks. super important. I'm glad Thanks. you asked that. So you want to have your, your water container, right? And you want to tap inside. It could be pretty clean, okay? You tap off the excess water, but not all the water, right? So I don't want it dripping water. I don't want this where it's dripping. But I do want it so that there's moisture in the water. So when it touches that paint, it helps to smooth it out. So I'm just using the very tip of the brush. Can we get a shot on this, Shelby? Okay. So I'm just using the very tip of the brush. And I'm just like kind of skimming over the top of it to get that so it blends. And so you can't tell the difference from where I started the line to where it ends. Okay. The only thing we don't want to do is go all the way. We want to leave this as bright as possible. Okay. Um, do I have brown? Oh, I have brown. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I'm going to wait a minute. Let me see what you guys are doing. How you doing? What you working with? Let me see where you need help. Uh, you got to show me, though. Yeah, show me what you're working with. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Looks good. Is there a couch in the bedroom? What's that? Yeah, right. It looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so no, then I'm no. going to show you. Yeah, you're going to be really happy with your painting. All right. Okay. That's what I have on. Oh, let's see. Let's see what Angela has. Let me see. Okay, good. Good job. All right. So. Next thing, how many ribs are in the human body? Is it 16, 24, 
28 or 30. How many ribs? 24. Uh, Isabel said 24. And the answer is 24. Oh. Good job. <laughs> All right, so our next step is so when we get done using these brushes, so they, you can use these at least for another six months. If, well, if you don't use them every day, they'll last you for, you know, a couple of years, I guess. But I use mine every day. They last me about three months. <laughs> um, but at any rate, so when you're done using your brush, you want to tap out the excess water and lay it down. Don't leave your brush in the water because it causes the, the rip, the, what's it called? Oh, I forgot the term. But these little things right here, it makes them uh, expand. The wood expands and then your brush tip falls off. You don't want that, you know. So, but these are really nice because, you know, they've got it so it ingrains into the wood and it'll have a harder time expanding, but it will expand and destroy your brush nonetheless. So just... Um, rinse it off and lay it down on your towel and keep your chisel mm -hmm. point intact. Uh, All right. So next we're going to use our number 12 brush. All right. So I'm going to pick up my um, nope. palette knife. Did I tell you that um, this, what we're doing right now is the funnest part of my job because I don't get to paint like every moment of my art existence you know it's like business you know doing this and following up right Amy oh, yeah <laughs> so when I get to do this part it's so cool because I really get to relax and enjoy this along with you so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some of my brown put that down to the side right and I'm gonna take a little bit of it put it to the side and I pick up some of that um, yellow that I missed like the second yellow so you see which one? And I'm going to mix that into my brown. Yeah, it looks pretty terrible at first. Not a pretty color. And let's add just a little bit of orange to that. So notice that I add super small amounts because it's easier to add more to change the color and impossible to subtract color from something you mix. So just add a little bit at a time. Okay, so I got the color. And it could be brown. It could even be the brown that we um, poured out of the container, but I don't usually recommend that people use color straight out of the container. So I'm dipping my number uh, 12 brush in the water. Okay. And I'm tapping off the excess water. Now, the cool thing about the number 12 brush is that it serves two purposes. So after dipping it in the water, I just want to lay it on the paper towel and let the paper towel soak out the excess water. And then it just automatically comes to a little point. Can you zoom in on that, please? So yeah, it comes to a nice point. So this means that when you need to get into and make a small space or make a small shape, this is the perfect tool for it, okay? So we're going to pick up a little bit of this color that we just created. I've already let the paper towel drink that excess water out of my brush. And I'm just going to use a very tiny bit because I want to test to see how this looks. And also when I do make a mark, I want to make sure that it's in the shape of the moon. Okay. So my line should be in this pattern. Like, okay, that's not what flipped it. Okay, and you can just kind of dab your little shapes. Now there's no rhyme or reason to these shapes, but if you start out small, you'll be fine. So I'm going right against the edge, just with the tip of the brush. And I'm following that line and I'm making like a little mini crater. I'm sorry, Cheryl, what color are we doing right now? Yeah. We're doing what, what brown. We're doing a brown. So um, this is the out of the container color right here. And then I mix some of my orange, my uh, yellow orange in with the brown to give it more of a, I don't know, uh, what color is that? I don't know, it's an ugly color, but 
<laughs> it's not as strong as the, as the as the brown straight out of the container, and that's what we want. So, so the brown out of the, the brown out of the container that I have looks like um, chocolate brown, like milk yeah. chocolate. Yeah, it's actually mm -hmm. called raw umber. And then the, when I mix it, it's looking like um, it's looking like tan. Yeah, that's fine. So um, does it look like this or lighter? I'm looking at yours. Yours looks green to me. Uh, looks, yeah, it looks a little bit like uh, fatigue, uh, but it's not. <laughs> Trust me, it's just uh, the, the monitor, I would guess, but it's okay. more of a brown color. So we just want to look, look at your image that you have in your package, and okay. that'll tell you what these look like. They're just like little brown patches of what, craters, I guess? They're like little craters. We're just attempting to uh, be gods right now, goddesses, and we're moving in the shape of the moon and just making a semi-round shape. Like this. So you can make a bigger one. You know, there's no right or wrong answer here. Just try to make the edges a little feathered. And you do that just by stroking your brush really lightly around the edge. Oh, and then we have another trivia question. So which popular Hollywood actor won Best Actor in 2016? Was it Johnny Depp? Leonardo DiCaprio or Mark, Mark, Matt Damon. <laughs> Leonardo. Leonardo DiCaprio? I don't know. DiCaprio. DiCaprio. What was the question? Um, who won the Emmy and, or the Grammy and, or the Academy? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. I named yeah, all of them except the right one. <laughs> oh well, yeah. My painting is a little rough, <laughs> right? So yeah, you could just just look at your image, and you know you're the goddess, so you can make these little craters wherever you want. Then um, we can make them deeper later on. That will be cool. I'll show you how to do that. So this is lighter because when we go back to make the um, the uh, the hole, because you know it looks like deep hole from far to far away. We do that with a darker color. That's going to be cool. So this is definitely, um, we all started offering this in beginning of October. It is one of our best sellers, this one, the Mimic the Masters with Bob Ross. So it's super fun and nostalgic. So yeah. I'm just going to blur these lines a little bit so it doesn't look so. Just a little bit of willy nilliness. Don't try to, you know, really create a pattern. Just be a little willy nilly. Then just kind of take your brush around on the tip and notice how I don't have a lot of paint on the end of my brush, right? So if I go willy nilly around here with the color, it's not really making any problems for me because there's not that much paint on my brush to mess things up. Now, I'm going to come over this side. Maybe there's just a tiny bit of a sunspot right there. And then I'm going to go and pick up some of my, um, my straight out of the container raw umber. And look where it is on the tip of my brush. It kind of looks like a, a quill. I'm over here. Oops. Okay. And so I'm going to take this dark umber and just put it right in the middle and blur it out. We'll do another one over here, I think. And maybe right here. And then you just kind of blur the edges of it so it doesn't look like just a dot. You have to blur the edges just with the very tip of your brush. So can you see how now those look like they actually have depth, those little spots? So just dot that dark raw umber there everywhere on your canvas that you've made you know these marks do we dot it in the center or outside yeah in the center right in the center then you blur the edges so once you blur the edges 
I've blurred all the edges of my little dots. Now I can go right back in the center and just put a dot there. Then it looks really like a deep hole. Okay, Shelby's got another question. How many taste buds does the tongue have? Is it uh, 600, 2,000, 9,000, or 20,000? How many? I'm going to go with 12,000. 12, yeah. You're going with 12? Shelby? And the answer is, ooh, I nine. I would have thought 12, too. All right, so I've got my little dots in on my, on my moon. And so now the next thing we get to do is paint the sky. My favorite part. You get to bring out your phthalo blue. So I'm gonna, you both have, uh, everybody has uh, two palette trays. So you wanna take that one out of the way because we got a lot of colors built on top of that. And we're gonna take our palette knife and then I'm going to take some of the white from my other tray because we don't want that to dry up. I'm going to just pick that up like that, put it down here. Again, don't mix your colors directly, straight out of the container. Put your blue off to the side like this. And yes, you do want to clean off your palette knife before you dip it into your paint, your white or your blue paint. And then I'm just wiping off my palette knife with a paper towel. Okay. So here we go. Now, the first area we're going to paint, everybody watching this, the first area we're going to paint is right around the moon. So it's a harvest moon. So the sky around the moon is illuminated, right? It's a lot brighter than everywhere else. So we're gonna create that illumination first, and then we're gonna get darker as we move away from the moon, right? So what color do we start with? We start with white, okay? Start with white. Then we take the tip of the palette knife. You can wipe that off. Take the tip of the palette knife and look how much blue I'm picking up. It's just a really small amount. Oops, let me go over here. Yeah, you see how small it is? to that white. So I'm adding that in because it's really powerful. It's that phthalo blue, beautiful, beautiful color. And I think I will add a little bit more white because I want to make sure I have enough so I can get a white. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more phthalo blue. But as you can see, I'm adding super small amounts so that I waste, waste my paint. So I'm mixing this in. And we're going to do, again, some wet, wet painting. And before I even dip my brush in this time, I'm going to use my palette knife to pick up some water. Wait, where's my camera? Okay. I'm going to use my palette knife just to pick up some water and put it here so that I get that ink consistency. And we're going to do one side of the moon at a time. Okay, because we're going to use this light blue throughout the, the painting, throughout the night sky part, right? So that's about how I want it. And then what we're going to do later is we're going to keep adding blue to it, okay, until we get further away from the light, right? Walk away from the light. All right. So I'm going to take my number four toothbrush. I'm dipping it in water, so it's like this. So oh, I've got... <laughs> I've got a wet brush. <laughs> no, I'm not over there, Amy. <laughs> what was that? That was no mute either. <laughs> I was using black instead of blue. Oh, no. <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, this is not blue. <laughs> I didn't understand. <laughs> Amy. Oh, you guys, I got like three hours of sleep. <laughs> she said, it's not my fault. <laughs> Oh, it's definitely my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go. I've got my, my paintbrush. It has a little water on it. You can see here. Can you see that? It's a little bit of water there. I want liquidity. We're doing 
wet on wet paint technique, right? So we want our brush nice and wet, but full of color. So I'm taking that little bit of water, I'm pushing it into my blue, and I'm starting on this side of the uh, moon. And I'm using my chisel edge of my brush to pull that color around the edge of the moon. And see, if you notice, the more liquid or the more water you have in your paintbrush, the easier it's going to be for you to spread it around. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around. Make sure it's nice and wet. At this point, we don't want to push down really hard next to the moon, because if we do, then our paint will splush <laughs> on top of our moon. We don't want that. So don't press down too hard. You're finding out that the paint's not flowing out of your brush. That means you don't have enough water in it. So go back and put some more water. And now we're going to create this half uh, circle of light around the moon. Okay, we're going to get that canvas nice and wet. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I am going to, yeah, we're going to put up a trivia question. So who won the Grammy for the best singer and album uh, in 2017? Was it Adele, Beyonce, Lady Gaga? Which one of those ladies was it? So I'm getting this all nice and wet all the way around. Adele. We got an Adele. Amy said Adele. Okay. I'm going to say the same as Amy. Adele. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. All right. All right. So I'm gonna, I want to go about halfway out, right? So I'm going to take, so this is all nice and wet, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to take some more water, and I'm now I'm going to go into my phthalo blue. So we get to pick up that beautiful blue. And I just want you to load some color on your brush. Don't uh, take out the color you already have in there. We're just going to add this color. And we're going to start out here, though. We're going to start out here. OK? And then we're going to work towards the center. And we're going to get lighter in our strokes as we get towards the, um, the moon. OK? So we got this darker color here. We're moving it towards the center. So this is a labor of love because you get to put down this beautiful color and you're creating the night sky. Now I'm going back into my blue. I'm not picking up any more of the lighter color. Now this is just blue. I'm adding to my brush and I'm going to hit it again, this time darker. And I'm still moving lightly with my stroke towards the center. Just keep, and real light. If I press down hard, I get lines, okay? So I want to make sure I'm touching really lightly and trying to blur the lines between my lighter color and my darker color. And if it feels like, like you're getting ridges like this, like I'm getting right now, that means I have too much paint on my brush, so I'm just wiping off that excess paint, okay? I'm going to just rinse one time, dab the excess water, not all of it, most of it. And then I'm just going to pick up some of this extra. I'm stroking and then I'm wiping off. Where I've got too much water, I'm just picking it up off the canvas, right? That's how you fix that problem. And your light strokes now. Nothing heavy. Light strokes. And keep going in the shape of a circle, half circle, right? So now we're going to go back, and I'm sorry, I know we're supposed to do another trivia question, but I want you to get this right, because this is like kind of what makes or breaks your painting. So now I'm 100% blue now, and now I'm starting out here. Oops, and not a lot, enough water, so I'm going back. I'm going to add a little bit more water, so I get that nice, um, what do you call it, uh, inconsistency. And I'm still going in my half circle. 
and we're moving towards the center. You want to get all those white spots. Oh, and one thing I didn't tell you guys, and oh it gosh. happens because I, I'm painting on a board instead of a canvas, so I tend to forget. But the most important thing you should remember is that you should always paint the edge of your canvas, always. Because this is going to be a beautiful painting, and you're going to want to hang it, and you don't want any raggedy old edges ruining the presentation of your work, OK? So I'm going to go in now and um, just wet my brush a little bit. I'm going to dab off some of that excess paint with my paper towel. And then I'm lightly again going towards the center so that I have this really nice graduation of color. What is the fastest fish in the world? Is it the nurse shark, the sailfish, the marlin, or the tuna? My daughter says it's the sailfish. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I <laughs> it was a sailfish. Yay. Yes. So much smarter than I am. Right? <laughs> yes, we need those kids. I read it in a book. You read it in a book? <laughs> what yes. book was that? Was that in school? It was the school book, yeah. Oh, okay. Good girl. It's called Faster and Faster. Oh, so did it have all kinds of animals who, um, and the yeah. speed they went? Yeah. So like the cheetah was in there? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Cheetahs are the fastest one, right? So. <laughs> all right, so here's another one for you then. What's your name? Anita. Anika? Anika, yeah. Well, nice to meet you. And here's a question for you. So what is the fastest snake in the world? Is it the black mamba, the king cobra, the boom slang, or the taipan? Excuse me. That one you don't know, huh? They didn't have any snakes in there, huh? Well, well, they only have like the fastest runner and they have fastest, like they didn't have like the fastest like type of thing. They only have like the fastest. Um, On land, the fastest in, yeah. in, in water and the fastest in the air. Yeah. The, the snakes didn't, didn't even get in the categories. <laughs> They're like, no snakes. Gotcha. All right, so now I'm getting closer to my um, moon. I want to be careful because I don't want to ruin that, right? So I'm taking most of the paint out of my brush and I'm just going here, making sure I keep my light intact. And I'm going to rinse off again. And actually right here, I'm going to add a little this color back in. Okay. Another trivia question is on its way. I'm just putting a little more of this light of color back in. Okay, which is the technical term for the brain of your computer? Is it the hard drive, the RAM, the CPU, or the motherboard? Any guesses? I don't know anything about computers. I don't know. Is it the RAM? You? I don't know. <laughs> this is not the computer group. <laughs> I would guess the RAM. I guess the RAM. The RAM? Oh, OK. Let's see what we got here. Is it CPU? Oh, yeah. it's the CPU. <laughs> all right, now we all know. So, okay, now we're going to the other side of our moon. We're going to the dark side of the moon. And um, we're going to pick up, again, we want a nice liquid kind of a, a blue. So we're going to use the rest of that blue that we made. And using the chiseled end of our brush, we're just going to follow that line around. 
like so. And then is that go the, and bring that color all the way out. Is that the lightest blue that you're using? That's our lightest blue, yes. Yes. And I'm picking this up and bringing it out all the way around. And feel free to pick up and turn your canvas. And also notice that um, to make sure that I keep the integrity of the moon, I will just place my brush at the edge of that line and then pull out in this direction. So if I do it this way, then I have the chance of this blue overrunning my circle. And I, I've done it before, so I have to make myself. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we want to keep continuing that all the way around and just mimic what we've done on the other side. Yeah, it takes just a teeny bit of focus not to <laughs> paint outside the line. Sometimes I hold my breath when I'm painting lines. And voila, we're all done with that line. And if you see excess paint again, if you see too much on your canvas, just wipe off your brush and use the brush to pick up the excess paint and then wipe and then pick up the excess and keep going. Okay. Which nut is used to make dynamite? Is it almonds, pine nuts, peanuts, or walnuts? See who gets this one. My favorite no question. Because no nobody's like, well, what do you mean? Yeah, I mean? When do you make, you make explosives out of nuts? Really? Okay, so we're following our circle around. No guesses on this one, Shelby. They're scared. <laughs> I want to answer this one. I'm going to guess pine nut. Uh, okay, is not that pine nut. I'll guess peanuts. Okay, Angela said peanuts. Ding, 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 ding. It's peanuts. Can you imagine? Mm. They said, I remember in, in elementary school, you know, George Washington Carver, and they're like, you know, he created, a, he found a, a 500 things to do with peanuts. And they're like, really? <laughs> All you could do is peanut butter. And he just went all the way. So apparently, one of those things you can do with it. So make sure you bring your color all the way to, sorry about that, to the um, other side so we can merge those colors together. Because remember, we're doing wet on wet painting. OK, so now I'm going to go back, pick up a little water. And now I'm adding in some of my phthalo blue, our color of the ocean and the sky. And I'm going to start um, about a quarter of the way out and start laying down my darker color. So we start out and then we rub our excess paint out to the edge. Now for this line, I'm just going to lightly touch it so that it blends right in. And we're still painting in a circle. So right now, I encourage you, when you get to this point, stop and take a picture so you can make sure that your, um, your circle is, you know, in line with how it should look. You know, it should be circular light around the moon. And then, yeah, just follow that circle shape. And then right when you get to where those two colors meet, we want to lightly stroke and, and bring those two colors together till they merge. You can't tell the difference between uh, where one starts and where one ends. That's what you're looking for. You don't want a hard line like this. You don't want it to stop or you could see a line like that, okay, between this and this. So you want to take your brush, make sure it's moderately wet, and you want to blend those two lines so that you can't tell where one starts and the other ends. And it's a light stroke. And you want to use the whole breadth of your arm to make that line so that you don't have brush strokes in the center, right? So of course I gotta fix this. We're gonna come in with our darker 
phthalo blue. We're just adding phthalo blue now. Okay, and we start out at the edge because that's dark and we're gonna get dark lighter as we go towards the center. What is the most common birthday in the United States? Is it February 14th, July 21st, September 9th, or December 23rd? What is your best guess? September 9th. September 9th. I'm going to go with July 21st. July 21st. I'm going to say November 23rd. <laughs> okay. Who's going to get a right one in there somewhere, huh? <laughs> Must be closer to your birthdays. Okay, <laughs> September 9th. Yay! I'm just thinking nine months after Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was thinking New Year's. <laughs> that was a very logical approach. Good job. Okay, so yeah, stop a minute and take a picture. I promise you, you'll be pleasantly surprised at what you've done so far. And also, it will help you determine where you need to put more blue in order to create a, uh, what do you call it, like a halo effect around your moon, okay? And when we get to that line that was dividing these two, you want to make sure you're overlapping that with um, a very liquid, kind of inky, not drippy, but inky version of your darkest blue, okay? We're in that big arch of a circle. Now, if this happens, now watch what happens here. See how I got this hard line going right in here? How do I fix that? I dip it in water. I dip my brush in water, okay? I take off most of that water, not all, and I just lightly brush it, real light, like I'm barely touching the canvas, okay? Now, as I get closer to the center, I don't want to keep, bless you, I don't want to keep going with this same color towards the light. Otherwise, I'm gonna cover up the light. So I have to do a complete rinse, okay? To blend this line, I have to do a complete a complete rinse. <laughs> Tongue twister. Um, and then I'm just taking out most of the water and just blurring this line, wiping off that paint. So I don't want this dark blue on my light area, right? So I'm wiping it off. Now I'll go back to my blue and kind of merge these together. Okay, so what is the most popular instrument in the US? Is it the drums, the violin, the piano, or the guitar? Guitar. 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 Got a lot of guitar guesses. I play guitar <laughs> once a year. <laughs> That's okay. Sweet. I play guitar once a year and that day is coming. It's piano. Ooh. Really? Yeah, it's a piano. Interesting. Yeah. So here we go. And now see, I got to check my own circle. But I can kind of tell just by looking at the monitor. So I got a little extra advantage. But yeah, you want to make sure you got like a halo around your moon. And when this happens, when you can see these little spots in between, that means my brush is too dry. So I need to make sure that I add some water to this area so I can cover this up. But I'm being very careful to keep that circle. And I'm gonna rinse again. And I'm tapping off uh, the excess water. And now I'm lightly brushing. I'm going to merge my lines once and for all. And we have a question on the board. It is about Frida Kahlo. Oops, I just made a boo-boo. Um, <laughs> what caused Frida Kahlo to become an artist? Was it her father's death, meeting Picasso, a traffic accident, or a dream? Traffic accident. A traffic accident. Traffic accident. Got some Frida fans in the house. Oh, wait, I was going to have my Frida painting out today. I didn't show it. I was going to show you guys my Frida painting. Anyway, we've done Frida a couple times. Love painting her. All right, and I'm dipping into my brain or my uh, water because I just want to. I just want to make sure my line is nice and blurred. 
I'm rinsing and just dabbing off some excess water and lightly brushing. And now, because I made a boo-boo, hopefully I have to figure out how to clean it. So when I have to make a mistake like this, okay, if you want to zoom in on this, Shelby, I just like totally ruined my little area right there. So what I'm going to do is um, clean my brush completely. Um, and actually, you should do this with clean water. Just start with clean water. That's the only way to do it. And then I'm just going to wet brush it. So it's like kind of like an eraser. And then I dry off my brush. And then I go back. And I take it off a little bit at a time. So yeah, I got a white spot there, but that's okay. Uh, so now I'll go back in and uh, pick up some white and some blue and fix that little spot. And what popular alcohol is made from fermented rice? Is it wine, beer, whiskey, or sake? Sake. 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 Okay. So good on a cold winter night. Mm -hmm. Any night. Any night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So now I had to go back in with my um, my light blue and she's been like I want to put something else here. So. Do one last pass around. All right, I'm not gonna overwork it. I'll be here all day. Artists don't usually paint things in two hours. Sometimes you it takes you days just because you want to come back and go. Oh, I should have done this because once you look at something for a long time, you, um, you know you don't have fresh eyes. So you have to walk away. What was the first planet to be discovered? by using a telescope? Was it Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, or Uranus? And now would be a good time to blow dry. Oh. If you don't have a blow dryer, if you have a box fan, if you have a box fan, you'll want to sit there and hold your painting in front of the box fan. Um, because um, if you try to chase trace on the wet canvas, you'll have a chocolate mess. Okay. So let's see what's the answer to this question. What was the first planet to be discovered by telescope? Of course, Uranus. <laughs> Is that, am I saying it wrong? <laughs> Shelby's <laughs> laughing at me over here. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, you know. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm going to unplug here for a second. I'm going to get my blow dryer out and we are going to dry our background. <laughs>
I have a question about blow dry. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm back. All right, it took me a minute. Kept unplugging things uh, inappropriately over here. All right, so now we're using this paper again. Uh, now we get to put in our trees. I know you are excited about this. This is the real Bob Ross portion, right? So um, this is what we're going for. This is what you need. You need your um, you need your fan brush, your number two fan brush. And I'll show you how that works in just a minute. But first, let's use our tracing paper to create some guidelines where the trees will go. in a nice little shape that enhances the, um, the moon itself. So you just probably kind of center your um, shiny side down um, carbon paper. <laughs> and then we're just going to lay our tracing paper right on top, okay? So there's, you know, this doesn't have to be super accurate or anything. We're just drawing some lines. You can use some of these lines. You don't have to use all. I'm probably gonna use like every other one and then kind of place my tree where I want it. But this just gives us kind of a guideline And um, let's see, yeah, all the way on the other side. Two, a couple here, one here. And then you can kind of draw this line in. It's all this on the bottom is going to get painted black. It's just kind of the landscape. And then a little path right here. And a little path. Just something to give us a little bit of guidance. Ta-da! So see how um, it's pretty light, you know, your, your Bob Ross brush is going to do all the work. But before we get there, I want you to know, can we have this shot, Kelbs? <laughs> okay, then Bob is with you. You need to see this. Bob is with you. There's no mistakes, only happy accidents. That's okay? awesome. <laughs> My whole painting is a happy accident. <laughs> <laughs> there you go absolutely the whole thing is a happy accident so i did a painting this weekend for a client um they wanted to do something that i thought was a little complicated for them so but it came out you know like when you create art you are at the mercy of the people who look at it until you get really thick skin and you decide you know what i'm just gonna paint for me anyway i had to get in that frame of mind and people loved it and i was so happy i was so happy it was so gratifying now i feel brave and courageous all right so the next thing we're going to do is uh you can use your same palette that we use for your midnight blue and also if you want to make this even darker you can um like you could even add here i'll show you so you can do this too because this painting even though we're going to finish it together it doesn't have to necessarily be finished forever you know what i mean so I put down a little bit of black just so if you want to do this later you can but basically we're just taking a little blue and i'm going to clean that black off of my knife because there's too much there and i'm going to wipe this off and i'm just going to pick a little of this blue up put it off to the side and then add a little black to it just a tiny bit you can see that it's always a tiny bit where did that white come from? Get out of there. We need this very dark. So it's like this super midnight blue. You know, like when you're walking in the forest, well, if you're walking in the forest, chances are the, the stars are really bright. But I'm trying to think when it's this dark. Well, when you're driving in Indiana. <laughs> you're talking on a road going into town. There's no lights out there, and it looks this dark. 
All right, so I'm just gonna pick up a little of this darker blue. Can you see how much darker that is? Okay, so I'm gonna go out here with it. Go even darker. You could go even darker than this if you want it. So I'm just gonna do this example in this little corner so you can see. In the, excuse me. Add a little water to it so it spreads really nice. And I'm going around in a circle. So that's up to you. Don't have to add that darker um, blue. I just wanted to let you know about it <clears throat> so you have that option. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I am going to um, pick up some more of my um, black, lay that down, and what I want, ooh, that's kind of grumpy. what I want is to add some water to this with my palette knife. Oh, okay. So um, tell us about what food never expires, white rice, honey, rye, or barley. What food never expires? So I've got a nice consistency on this. It's like an ink. That's what we want. Not soupy. Okay. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and just pick up a little bit of that. And we're going to just start on the bottom and follow our little trail. Okay, put down a little foundation for our little hill to live on, our trees to live on, I should say. And we're using our number 14 brush because it helps give us a nice straight edge. And just fill that in. So what's that answer, Shelby? What's the food that never expires? No guesses, huh? Amy, <laughs> what's the answer? It's <laughs> like, sorry. Very good. Uh, it's the only thing I'm good at right now. <laughs> it's trivia. <laughs> All right. All right, here. So I'm coming up the other side. Actually, just go ahead and fill all that in. We're going to uh, make that highlight with uh, uh, our other color, our gray, later on. So just go ahead and fill that in. Um, <laughs> what so are the, one of these condiments is a 19 or 1830s medicine, medicine. <laughs> I didn't even read that right. Uh, but anyway, so your choices are one of these things was used as medicine. So it's a soy sauce, ranch dressing, maple syrup, or ketchup. And we must have an answer on this one. We just cannot move forward unless you answer this. I'm guessing maple syrup. Okay, so that was where I, she said maple syrup. That was my guess too. It, you know, so natural. Ketchup, that's kind of processed. And so is, oh, it's ketchup. ketchup. Of course. <laughs> of course it's ketchup. One of these days I'm going to look that up. What did it cure? Because I got plenty of ketchup. <laughs> Is this just black? I feel like I missed. Yes, the... it's black. It's black. Okay, just black. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Oh, we're not using this anymore. Okay, so now our next step is going to be just let's take our number 14 brush, let it do its work for us, okay? We're turning this back into a chisel again. We're just gonna use that chisel, lay it down on that line, and just pull it up to the top. And then we'll be ready for our, our fan brush. But for now, we're just using our little chisel to, to make the straight line of the, the tree. 
So this is after the fire. <laughs> now we're going to restore the trees. Okay. So yeah, you want to make sure you've got enough water in your brush so that it's not soupy and there's no water dripping off, that your chisel is in place. And then you place it on your canvas and you should get a nice straight line. You're pressing really lightly because what happens if you press hard, then you make a bigger mark on your canvas. So it's a really light touch here. You notice that my brushes are not bending at all. Okay, so how many keys are on a traditional piano? Is it 32, 34, 52? or 54? Hmm. They always say 88 keys, right? So I'm confused. The black keys. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, that's so cool. I totally want to paint this differently next time. Okay, so when you get to this point, you're almost ready for the Barbara's touch. Now, I'm gonna tell you, you have to take your time with this part because um, <laughs> it's been a long time since I painted, you know, the Bob Ross method. Um, the fan brush is something you master. Like you don't come out of the gate knowing how to use the fan brush, but it's not impossible, right? So the way it starts is we're just going to take our brush like this. You don't need to wet it first, right? You want your paint to be straight out of the container. We're going to go ahead and pick up some of this nice thick black and put that down. We want our brush loaded. So watch me load this brush. So I just putting my brush in there, getting a nice amount of paint on there. And then we're going to use the corner of the brush. We're not using the entire brush, right? All right. So here we go, ladies. We are using this corner. Let's do some zooming in. We are using this corner of the brush. Okay, we don't want paint dripping off the edge. We want a nice sharp corner. I don't feel like that's sharp. I'm gonna go back and make it sharp. Okay, so now I got a nice sharp corner. I got enough paint on there. What is this? Get off of there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm laying down my first stroke by touching to the top like so. Okay, now I'm turning my brush this way to get the tape and that way and this way. I'm still just using the edge of the brush, that one edge, I'm not using the whole brush yet. And it's okay if it's not perfect because trees are not perfect. They might look perfect, but they're really not. And now we can just keep going left and right, left and right, left and right. And if you're good at this right away, lucky you. Because it took me a lot of try to get it right. So I'm very impressed if you can nail this. But just take your time. Don't rush it. Okay? Nobody's saying you have to do this fast like he does. You just place and move. And then when you get to the bottom, okay, you're, you can use a little bit more of the brush. Can you see that? So I'm using a little bit more, but I'm taking my time, place the brush so that it creates the look I want. And I actually feel like I'm going to blur that center line. I don't like that. So I'm just going to go up and knock that out. I'm going to hit it with the end of my brush so you can't see it because you wouldn't be able to see the center of this trees. Um, what do you call that? 
trunk. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see the tree's trunk. So I'm just blurring that line. Okay. So yeah, you can test your fan brush on a separate paper. Thank you, Shelby, for reminding me. All right, we're going to do uh, some sample lines. Um, what do I have? What do I have? Uh, I don't have a piece of paper. Can I have a piece of paper to show this? All right, I'm going to stop. We're going to do this again, right? So clean sheet of paper. You can do this on the back of your reference image, OK? I'm going over and I'm picking up paint. I want my brush full of paint, but I don't want it dripping off the edges, right? Because where there's a little bit of precision involved, right? So this is, let's just, uh, I'm going to make the center line with the brush like this. Okay, so I'm using this corner of the brush and I'm doing a right, left, right, left, right, left. Oops, is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we do that. And just that one edge. And then when you get to the bottom, you can be a little bigger with that. Well, not bad, but you can be a little bigger. Okay, and then just try it a couple times. Okay, there's my right. Oops, too much clean. And don't worry about if that happens because, you know, it's silhouetted against the moon, so. <clears throat> All right. So you can practice a little bit on a separate sheet of paper if you like to make sure that you get your trees kind of close to what they should look like. So I'm going to go over to the, my next tree. I'm putting down the corner of my brush. And I'm using the right side. And then, then I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And my tree looks lopsided. That's all right. It's a decrepit tree. All trees are not perfect. Some of them are spindly. <laughs> so this is one of those. This is a spindly little tree. It's not Bob Ross approved. Did you guys ever see the episode where he has a little squirrel in his pocket? It is the cutest thing you ever saw. Okay, so again, so at the top, and now this time I'm going to be a little bit more focused, and I'm going to use just the tip of the brush there and there, and there, and a little bit bigger as we go around, back and forth. Carol, can you say how much paint we're supposed to have on the brush? Is it a, just a little bit? So the amount of paint you should have, so take a look here. Hold on just a second. OK, so we're picking up. We want to fill that brush with paint, OK? Now, we're not going to try to get all the paint out of the brush at the same time. You know, we're not trying to force it out. What we want, though, is a clean edge. So there's no paint hanging off the edge here. There's no paint hanging off the edge there. There's actually too much paint on the edge because once I put that brush in, that extra paint is going to pop out, if you can see that. So just enough so that your brush is loaded. You have to reload several times. So um, let's see, one more, one more shot. So if you can see that. Is that coming through OK? All right. So I want to be able to use this edge to make a mark. And I don't want like a glob of paint on the end of that. It has to be in the brush. I have to work to get it out. So now I'm just laying my brush down on both sides of that hole, kind of guiding me. And so now I'm pushing a little bit with my with my brush. And again, I'm going back and I'm smushing that line because I don't think you should be able to see the tree trunk, at least not the entire way down. So I'm just smushing that line a little bit. And then I'm going to go here again 
and I'm making that same motion just with the corner of the brush. Lay it down. Lay it on the other side. And then just keep going down. Back and forth. And I'm smooshing that line again. So, yeah, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because there's no way you can mess up trees like this. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so Portugal is bordered by what other country? Is it France, Brazil, Germany, or Spain? Spain. Uh -huh. Miriam. Miriam knows her geography. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Good job. So yeah, oh, and then a little baby tree right here. And then here you have to just make sure you, you know, you're not pressing too hard because this is a tiny little tree. And same thing here, go in, just tap with the edge of your brush. And you'll kind of have to find the right angle to get so that your branches are either going down this way, like this. So you're like kind of turning here and there to get that shape. I'm gonna push this line out of here. Okay, so what is a group of turkeys called? Is it a uh, clutch, a rafter, a brood, or a peep? <laughs> a group of turkeys, a clutch, a rafter, a brood, or a peep. Hmm. No wild guesses there? <laughs> See what I did with that? Yeah. Wild guesses, <laughs> wild turkey. We're too busy concentrating on this fan brush. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Using. <laughs> I'm like, how did you get those shapes? I can't figure it out. Okay. Me either. What is that? Okay, so here, I'm going to do it again now. Okay, please. Because I want you all to get this. No fun doing this if you can't get it. All right, so we're going to have to get our new um, uh, left hand camera coming in here. So we're going to give you two different angles, right? Let's do two angles. All right. <clears throat> so, all right, look at this. We are fancy today. Okay, so we're going to start off with our with our uh, brush, okay, it's well loaded, but there's no paint dripping off the sides. We're putting, we're using just the tip, so watch. My knuckle is resting on the paper. My brush is at an angle. Um, I'm gonna move down this way because it looks like, okay, there we go, they can see better there, okay? So look at how my brush is angled. My, handle of my brush is parallel with the table. Okay, can't go at this straight on like this except to make your first line. You can do that. Okay, but the rest of the time your brush should be parallel to the table. So we want to use, we want to use this side. Oh wait, here, I'm sorry. I'm going to go from this side. Same thing though, your brush is still parallel to the table. Okay. And now I'm moving forward and I'm touching just the tip. Yeah, my paint dried up. I was talking for so long. Just the tip. Shelby's laughing at me. Um, and then just the tip here. So I'm just barely touching here. And I'm going to go to the other side. And I'm using just the tip. Okay. You have to have faith that these lines are going to look okay. So you just keep making them, even though they look strange, they don't look exactly like mine. Just keep making them till you get to the bottom. Uh huh. You know, just keep going. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. <laughs> just keep going, right? And then if you don't like the way it looks, then you can come back and take your brush and just tap, 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 tap. And kind of go back in, turn your brush at angle like that until it starts to look like the tree you want. But don't overdo it. 
because when you overdo it, then it starts to look crazy. So this is, wait, let's see. I'm trying to figure out where is the one. Okay, I'm going to show you something. So this was the first one I did. This is the first flower I did. Okay. Now, does that, to me, that looks like it's, it's, it's not right. It's, I see all kinds of errors. But to you, it looks great, right? Right? Now, um, Angela, mm -hmm. you're supposed to say yes. It looks great. <laughs> Yeah, so, great. <laughs> so this is my second one that I did. Now, see, I feel like this one is more precise, but it, you know, it kind of looks precise. So it should look, the forest is willy nilly. It's not all organized like this, unless you're at a park or something like the zoo, you know, and you see the trees are all lined up real nice. So they should look kind of more like this. Okay, so just don't be too hard on yourselves. This would be a good time to stop and take a picture of what you're doing because this will show you what you're doing right and what you might need to tweak. Okay? So, okay, I'm going to keep going because I still have a couple more trees to do. And let's go ahead and put up another trivia question. Let's see how they do on this. And then not too much paint on your brush. I'm wiping out the excess. What is the number one cookie in the United States? Is it Chips Ahoy? Is it the Milano, the Girl Scout Thin Mint, or the Oreo? Oreo. Oreo. <laughs> Our ladies know their cookies. <laughs> Final answer. Oreo. Yay. Yeah. First step out of there. And I need to break this. This is, looks too perfect. So I'm going to put some little raggedy trees and some shadows. You could even put, it, put an owl on the top of your tree or something. Let's see. Oh. I'm it's getting fancy. <laughs> and I'm going to put one here. And I'm going right, oops, let me fix this so you can see this. So right, left, right, left, right, left, left. All the way down. And I need one more paint on my brush. Oh, okay, so what um, was the first Disney film that was produced in color? Was it Cinderella, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, or Pocahontas? Snow White. Let's see, someone said, Miriam said Snow White. It won an Oscar, even. Oh, okay. <laughs> <That's my final laughs> uh, you know your trivia, Miriam. Yeah. Miriam, are I, you one of those people that likes kids' movies better than adult movies? Yes. Also, I should not know this much trivia. I should, like, know other things, but my head is full of useless knowledge. <laughs> I am the same way. I prefer like my one of my favorite movies is In and Out. Um, oh. And Up. That's one of my favorite movies. You got to see if you haven't seen Up, you need to see it. Oh, another recommendation for um, women who like to see women in film. So it's on uh, Netflix and it's called, I meant to tell you this, Shelby. It's called uh, the Queen, the Queen's Gambit. The Queen Gambit. <laughs> I can't oh, wait amazing. to see that. I just got halfway through it last night. The I Queen Gambit. It's good. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. It's so yeah. I mean, there's a lot of alcohol and drug use, so you wouldn't like, I guess, have your kids watching it. But uh, other than that, but it's, it's only seven really... episodes, so it's not that long. Yeah, and it's just a positive kind of uh, a girl movie, I think. I just like Empowering. it. Empowering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you know, you have to, you know, screen your movies for certain things when you're a parent. So, anyway, uh, I highly recommend it. I'm only halfway through it. I'm loving it. Love things. You'll like yeah. it. All right. So, a couple more trees. And wait, I think I will put a, oh wait, I can put that. 
you are the master of your forest, okay? So like the way the trees are, you can change them. And I think I want another one right here. It's too sparse, the forest. Um, where in the United States is the world, or is the United States' largest aquarium? Is it New Jersey, Maine, California, or Georgia? Georgia. <laughs> I don't know. That was Ushma. She said you're someone who lived there. <laughs> yeah, why well, she's been there, right? Yeah, finally I got one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right. Yep, that's right. All right. So now we get to do another fun part, and so this makes me want to make this tree bigger. Hold on. Okay. So. You want to pick up a little, just a teeny bit of water, teeny, 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 tiny bit, and go into your white. Because now we're making highlights. We're making some snow and some, some harvest moon highlights on the trees. So we don't want a lot of paint. And we do want it white or gray. And that's too dark. There's not enough contrast for me. So I'm going to pick up some more white. And I'm going to put it down here. And I'm going to clean off some of this other things that apparently have too much black. And I'm going to just pick up a little bit more white. So it's a nice bright gray. Not, yeah, about like this. We're mixing it kind of good so we have a nice even color. We don't need any more black on the canvas. What's you laughing at? Show me. <laughs> the peanut gallery over here. <laughs> All right. So I'm taking off the excess now because we don't want too much paint in our highlights. Right? So now I'm just going to go back to where I, um, where the moon is shining on the, the leaves. So I'm just going to tap. Tap right where I've already tapped, just on one side, because the, the moon wouldn't be reflecting on the other side so much. So we're just going to get like this one side of the tree, the taller ones, and probably over here too. And actually, I want to make that brighter, because it's like right in the light. So I'm going to brighten that up a little bit, take off the excess and hit it right here. Do I have, right on the edge. And then we could like make it like a little valley, just lightly touch right here in the center. It's like you're making that little path that was there before. If you're not sure where those lines go, just go ahead and uh, Put your tracing paper back on top. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but you may be able to see the raised area of the carbon paper. It'll show you how to make those, that curve. So when as it goes away, of course it gets lighter and you can't see it anymore. And then I'll maybe just dab some light here and there. <laughs> Bob's with me right now, I can hear his voice. <laughs> And those happy little leaves <laughs> in the bright moonlight. Yes, that's nice. Oh, he cracked me up, man. I could just listen to him all day. So you know he's on Netflix, right? So if you've never heard of Bob Ross, he's on Netflix. You can watch him there. Thank you for the fresh water. Um, okay, so in which city was the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off filmed? Was it Pittsburgh, Chicago, uh, New York or San Francisco? Chicago. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Pittsburgh, Chicago, San Francisco, or New York? Where was it filmed? I've never seen it, so I have no idea. Oh, okay. No. You have to see it, Chicago. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like okay. the movie's all about <laughs> Chicago. It is. It is Chicago. Good job. So let me tell you something about your fan brush. You shouldn't have had to rinse it yet. So what I'm going to tell you is this. Don't 
smash it to the bottom of your glass to clean it. You'll ruin it and you'll never be able to use it again. So just swish it in your water, take it over to your sink and take some dishwashing liquid and just clean it out with your fingers, okay? Because then you can use it again. And yeah, that'll preserve the integrity. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse mine out though because um, this is my new water. Okay, I'm just gonna use my fingers and push out the excess paint. Don't um, use your bottom of your glass or your can to rinse your uh, fan brush. Use your fingers and push the paint out if you can't get to the sink. All right, and then we get to make our stars. So, how do we do that? So, first thing I would do is grab either, you can use your tracing paper, I guess. So, we're going to start, I'm just going to black it right here. And um, I'm going to go back to my lighter color palette so I can get some white going again. And I think I've learned a lesson that we cannot use just pure white for some reason. It just is too much. It looks fake. So we have to pick up some white and put some blue in it. I'll put a little blue in it to tone it down. Not a lot. We'll put it off to the side. And I'm just gonna add a tiny bit, like a super tiny bit. So like that. Even lighter than this, it doesn't have to be this dark. Okay, then we're just gonna pick up some water in our fan brush and just pick up some uh, paint. And I'm gonna dip my brush back in the water and pick up a little bit more paint because I want uh, like an inky consistency, but not so much paint that it's dripping off, right? Just enough so that when I hit the brush, it releases the paint. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just tap off that excess right there because I don't want a big blob of paint falling on my canvas. All right, and we have another trivia question before I go into this dangerous paint splattering. That's what we're gonna do. So you can practice first on your piece of paper, use your reference image and just tap. If you get big blobs like that, that's too big, right? Can you see that? Those are too big. I mean, in my opinion, you may like them, but I'm testing out to see. So I'm, all I'm doing is just tapping. So yeah, let's tap on something else first. Now I feel like I got most of that water out. I'm just gonna go now and tap on my canvas. See, and it's still kind of drippy. So that's why you want to test on another piece of paper first, so you can make your mistakes over there. So I'm going to pull that off. And then I'm going to go to the other side. And I'm actually not, I'm just going to hold it here, because I don't want to lay it on the canvas because it's a little sticky. You don't want to do that. Just cover up your, your moon so you don't contaminate your moon with stars. And actually, you should probably cover up your trees too. Trees don't normally have stars. <laughs> uh, and then actually, you know what? I think I'll hit this one more time with some, with some white, with a lighter color. And I'm making sure I don't have too much on. I want hardly any paint on my brush at this point, on my fan brush. And I'm just gonna lightly touch to see how that's gonna look. So I'm just lightly touching. So it's like another layer of like snow or light, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell when women are focused, boy. They're not a peep <laughs> out of y'all. They're <laughs> <laughs> serious about it. <laughs> That's good though. You know, your blood pressure lowers as you're doing this. Good. It's good for you. Art is good for you. Okay, so we got a, uh, oh, I didn't get to answer that question. 
Did you guys see the question? <laughs> oh, see, I know I made my, you made me make my thing too fat. It's your fault, Chubby. The lion's got too fat over there. Which of the following songs is not a song by TLC? Is it Creep, Waterfalls, Say My Name, or No Scrubs? My name. Say my name. Yeah. Say my name. Say my name. They're all say my name, say my name. <laughs> yes, that's the answer. Say my name. Good job. <laughs> you guys are so quiet. <laughs> no, they're like a little person, a little cute. Can we be a cat? If not, don't worry about it. All right. So now the next thing, so stop. Did you, who took a picture of their work so far? Raise your hand if you took a picture. None of you guys did. Okay, there's one. Good girl, Isabelle. Miriam, good, good, good. And so did Angela. Amy. <laughs> no. Oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm the I'm the problem child today. She is the problem <laughs> child. How did it work out that way? <laughs> oh, too funny. Oh my god. Okay. Um I am I'm stopping to take a picture of mine because I want to see what mine looks like. Uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. Uh, I like the halo around mine. It's the biggest halo I've had so far. I love the halo. That is so, that just makes it. Hold on a minute. Let me show you. Let's compare. <laughs> um, oh, here's one. That's the first one. Oh, it's right underneath. Okay, so first one, second one, third one. Um, what do I do with these paintings? I paint all these paintings and I, I still haven't figured out what to do with them. Any suggestions? <laughs> Seriously, I'm asking. What should I do with them? Should I give them away? But sometimes I feel like who would want my paintings like this, you know? So I don't know. Anyway, I like the one with the brightest light. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, that one's good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. It looks very planetary. <laughs> so, okay, and now I want you guys, okay, to take a picture of your painting and then I will show you how to draw your signature if you like. Uh, and you're going to do that with your number 12 brush. Number 12 brush. And I would suggest you do it in white. Like over here in the dark. It just kind of pops out in that corner. So the trick with that number 12 brush is to make sure that you twirl the brush. What? Did I really just do that? Twirl the brush. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So. I'm rinsing out my number 12 brush and I'm getting my point back. I'm tapping off the excess water and then I just kind of twirl it on my paper towel like this so I get that point back. And I'm also letting the paper towel drink out the excess water from my brush. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my blue. Uh, yeah, the blue that I just mixed for the stars. And I'm creating like a, a quill, you know, like from the 1700s. And I'm going to go over here in the dark and I'm going to write my name. So the way you do that is, first of all, you make sure all of that excess water is soaked out of your brush. Let the paper towel drink it out. Then you just use like the last two hairs on the tip of the brush. And very lightly. Oops. Oh, 
getting any action here. Okay, let's try that again, Cheryl. I always admire when I watch old movies and I see um, those guys who used to paint names on doors and signs and all that kind of stuff. It's like, wow. So amazing how we did it. Okay, so here. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush. Not too heavy with the C. I'm <laughs> making an exaggerated C. What is the warmest sea on earth? Is it the Dead Sea, the White Sea, the Red Sea, or the Black Sea? What is the warmest sea on earth? Any guesses? I want to say the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea. I don't know why they call it the Dead Sea. I'll say the Red Sea, just to change that. Oh, she did just in time, my dear, just in time. Oh. <laughs> Look in. My hands always get just paint all over them. So my son, he's a banker, um, but he was out of work for several months. So he's been, well, was helping me in the studio. And he would pour paint. Now he would come dressed in all white in the summertime and, uh, you know, nice shoes and everything. And he would pour paint like for, you know, a hundred kids and never spill a drop of paint on it. You know, I'd say, why don't you get an apron? I don't need an apron, mom. I mean, how do people do that? Not get paint on them. <laughs> if, if I'm painting a room, I got paint in my hair, my shoes. Everywhere. <laughs> Maybe I'm just always supposed oh, I miss to miss you. I thought it was gonna be. What was that? Oh no, nothing. <laughs> oh. I'm at a friend's house and I and I thought it was gonna be um not so messy. So I was like worried that I was gonna make a mess at my friend's house. And how did you do? I contained the mess. Oh, okay, good. There's not paint <laughs> flying in the air or anything. I don't, I don't, I should inspect it before answering <laughs> that question. When you get up, there'll be a, you know, space where there's no paint. <laughs> I know, like I have all the spots all over my underarm. <laughs> okay, good. I don't know a kindred, how it got there. A kindred soul. Exactly. Everywhere. So yeah, you guys, let me see what you got. Well, let me see what you're working with. Thank you, Shelby. Because I want to see everybody. Oh, good. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I can't. Did my mouse go off? Yes, it did. Hold on just a second. Oh, Angie, I like your trees. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good one, Isabel. And yeah, good trees. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't take them too serious. Hey, you know, those are all different uh, breeds of trees, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they look great. Here, hold on. You can't go yet because I want to, if you're not on camera right now, can you please come on so we can get a group picture and Amy can share this with everybody? Yes, please. So I see six people. And how many, let me see how many do we have actually on, Shelby? Eight. We have eight. eight. Oh, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, does that mean that you guys have like multiple people in your destinations? More than one. Okay, never mind. Anyway, I love the way everything looks. I love the lunar, the light. Don't put it down yet. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. Sorry. Am I on camera? Because they can't see me, I yes. guess. Okay. <laughs> All right, good, good smiles. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. And here I'm gonna take a short video too. Hold on, I always do this. This is nice. You guys can do, what do they call those? Um, not TikTok, but a, a GIF. Yeah, I'm doing this for a GIF so you can do something silly. Rock your head back and forth or something. There you go. 
<laughs> Come on, thank you for for indulging me. All right, cool. So, yeah, you guys, we did it. You did it. We had success. Did you have fun? This was so fun. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you had fun because it's always fun for me. It's my break that I get to have, you know, a couple times a week. And uh, yeah, we just invite you to follow us. We're on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. And, um, you know, I like to post uh, what's going on. I always come up with new ideas. So there's always something new uh, going on. Um, do we have our, oh yeah, we got it on the screen. We got our social media stuff on the screen. And what else? Anything? Watch for our Black Friday sales. So if you guys are having holiday things going on and you want something to do with the family, uh, keep us in mind for that. We're going to have a, a Black Friday special. And I'll make sure that since Amy's on the list, she can share that with you. If you're not following my Facebook page, if you are, you'll know about it. Okay. And so that's it, right? All right. So uh, thank you. Wow, thank you. Oh, thank you. you're welcome. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Um, Can anyone from Answer take a screenshot of our... Um, don't you worry. Can we... You will get it in the next 24 okay. hours. I mean, that's... Okay. And that was oh, with you. everyone that's on there? Yeah. I got six people on the screen, so... Okay. Right? Are there only six of us? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. see it. So the other two people are me and Shelby, so... <laughs> All right. And then we'll have a recording for this, right? For the other people. It to is it. totally recorded right now. Yep. You're all set. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, oh, wait, I want to put my picture up for today. And there's Bob Ross. There he is. <laughs> oh. Dance, yeah, little man. Yeah. Okay. So we'll say goodbye and uh, we hope you come see us real soon. All right. Uh, Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 You're welcome. Uh, I'm not sure. That looks good. <laughs>